All right, everybody. Welcome to Liberty Libations. My name is Jake Green. This is Nick Soselski, Zane Placy or Placy. I never remember. You would think that after this many episodes. Look, I only ever say Zane. Okay, so how do you pronounce so why it? Why you change it up this time? Though? Well, because we're live. There are people here. We're Placy. There we go. That's what I thought. We got Steve Hilton, and joining us for a few minutes. Introduce yourself. Matt. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Who are you? What are you doing here? Return of the Mac. I'm here to embarrass myself. <laughs> there we go. The Mac, is a, Mac is a stand-up comedian that's going to be performing here in about, what is it, hour and a half? Hour and a half. That's my one. Opening for the great Adam Nutter. Um, thank you all for joining us. If you all don't know, uh, Liberty Elevations, we do this every Thursday night, or 99% of Thursday nights, uh, from 8 to 10. Um, and it's me and these three. Um, and we have a rotation of a couple others that uh, chat about news from the from that week um, and kind of go spiraling down a whole bunch of other avenues <laughs> that don't all link up and don't all have any relevance towards each other or towards liberty, but it's always fun to talk about. Um, yeah, right now we've got Mr. Matt Carter joining us. Um, Mac, how'd, how'd you get into comedy? Accidentally? Yeah, I fair enough. A, you know, always, uh, always enjoyed watching the stand-up comedy from afar, and just, just happened to be uh, at a stand-up comedy club when they were offering open mic night, and inebriated, and serendipity <laughs> occurred. All right, so not not too dissimilar from what we're doing right now. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. It was a train wreck. Yeah. Then, then as well as now. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, we just, a few of us just got drunk one night and started talking live on a podcast, and that's kind of <laughs> this all started. <laughs> um, well, thank you for joining us tonight, Mac. Um, stoked to stoked to see your performance here in a bit. You won't be soon. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, y'all. Recently, we've started out doing uh, trivia, um, and we're going to do that today. Um, Let's see. I got it pulled up somewhere. Sweet. All right. We're Libations be, trivia live at the Great Create. Yeah, the theme with the convention, we're going to be doing trivia on Robert's Rules of Horror. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. It will be uh, Liberty Quotes, <laughs> and it's going to be audience versus panel. So the first person to raise their hand to tell me who said this quote, um, there's 15, 15 of them. Um, so... If you know the answer, raise your hand. We've had the audience beat uh, the panel before on some live streams, <laughs> and it's pretty embarrassing because um, there's about a 15 to 20 second delay between comments and us actually talking. And so the fact that the audience can uh, answer quicker and better than the panel is uh, kind of embarrassing for these three. We are expert non-experts. <laughs> Perfect. The right. time the audience won, I was in the audience. Shut your mouth, Zane. <laughs> Zane always wins. He's like an encyclopedia of everything. All right. First question. Those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves. Ben Franklin. Wrong. <laughs> Anybody? Thomas Nick? Jefferson. Nope. Alexander Hamilton. Wrong. Man, y'all are just blowing it. Anybody in the audience? Anybody know? Abraham Lincoln. Oh, <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> oh, okay. So, the, so the guy who uh, declared war on half the country and slaughtered. The oh, guys, uh, <laughs> some of these are very ironic. There are a few that are ironic, and I'm realizing now that I don't have the answers in front of me, and I don't know all the answers. So this could be super interesting. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. You know, I don't know. Okay. 
<laughs> Let's get some guesses. I'll just say Ben Franklin again. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's Ben Franklin. Anybody in the audience know? Okay, that's a good one. Anybody else? Right. You think Stephen's right? All right. Oh, John Basil Barnell. Who's that? <laughs> Obviously, he was quoting Jefferson when he said it. Oh, he was definitely quoting Jefferson. He yeah. said it. He said it last year, actually. Now you're on the record. <laughs> and according to Stephen, I'm allowed one wrong answer at every four. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next quote. If liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yes. Yes, you got it right. Uh, Anybody up here? These are not going to get uh, easier. John Brendan. You know, it could be George Orwell. It's, it's George Orwell. Oh! oh so good. <laughs> Got it. Nicely done. I should have written these down so I know for a fact if you get the answer right. That's really unfortunate. Um, for to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. Frederick oh. Douglass. All right, well, if that's the guess. Huh? I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a quick typer. Good job. <laughs> there we go. And if you disagree with him, he'll put a tire around you and set you on fire. Never gets <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever would overthrow the liberty of a nation must begin by subduing the freeness of speech. John Peter Zenger. No. If that's the fucking <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not it. Fair enough. I mean, you're you're technically correct. Carl Marx. Look at Steve, look at Steve, he Wrong. The it is not Carl Marx. I didn't know Carl. You know, you know. Well, I know it's not Carl Marx because I didn't type that in anywhere. <laughs> Benjamin oh, Franklin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The one time you didn't guess yeah. Ben Franklin, Zane. Good job. Zane's living in the future here. This reminds me of the time I was playing Pictionary, and just as soon as they started, I would just say potato over and over again. And then one time I actually was potato, and I didn't say it, and everyone was like, There's no justice in the world. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so you're one of those game players. Got it. One Someone everybody great. dislikes. All right. Liberty has never come from the government. Liberty has always come from the subjects of it. The history of liberty is a history of resistance. Thomas Jefferson. Patrick Henry. It could be Thomas Jefferson. I'm just not sure. Yet again. Anybody else have any guesses? Thomas Paine. Huh? Possibly. We're going to find out here in a second. Oh! <laughs> oh. 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 All right. Uh, what? Yeah. Who wants to go first taking shots at Woodrow Wilson? <laughs> I mean, just the, the pure irony of that statement. We've got some tyrants on this list here. How would this? I know, but tyrants rule with pulling the mask over your face. You know? Yeah. Wool over your face, whatever it is. Wool over your eyes. I don't want to trust you. <laughs> All right. The urge to save humanity is almost always a false face for the urge to rule it. Pretty indicative of the last three years. Hmm. Oh, it sounds familiar. Is it Lincoln? Yes. Whoa. Yes. You dirty diva. <laughs> you need to be smart. very good. Very good. All right. Next one. Liberty means responsibility. That is why most men dread it. Benjamin Franklin. Thomas Jefferson. I don't think it's been Franklin. <laughs> Guesses? Anybody? Thomas Payne. Anybody else? Thomas Payne in your head. All right. Okay. Anybody, any other guesses? All right. George Bernard Shaw. What? <laughs> I can't uh, confirm or deny that because I didn't do enough research into these quotes. <laughs> I haven't had a lot of time, in case y'all weren't aware, I've been running the stuff in the ballroom and I didn't have. Oh, I didn't know I was going to be doing that when I showed up here. So I've uh, had to adapt. <laughs> I was going to make a much bigger deal out of this whole presentation. 
<laughs> economic freedom is an indispensable means toward the achievement of political freedom. The main man, Ludwig von Mises. Wrong. He's very confident. Wrong. I know who this one is. Hans Hermann Hopp? Nope. Anyone? Watch this be Donald Biden. Trump. That could be it. it seems like ah, it's Milton Friedman. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was Friedman. <laughs> then you said Hayek, and I was like, I remember writing that. <laughs> Extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice, and moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. Sam Adams. No. Barry Goldwater. Yes. Oh, Barry right. Goldwater. Is, there, is everyone down there taking a sip when they get it wrong? I just want to make sure we're all on the same level. We, <laughs> we should have played a drink. I'm going to need another one if that's the case. No, I, no. You don't get another free Guinness. You had yours. I'll pay you like something later. <laughs> he that would make his own liberty secure must guard even his enemy from oppression. For if he violates this duty, he establishes a precedent that will reach to himself. I mean, that's a, that's a tough one. Anyone? Murray Rothbard. Hayek? Uh, <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> Thomas oh, Bain. Where are you at, man? <laughs> I don't know. Leave it a thing. I, I don't know. All right. I believe Zane has gotten two right. I believe you've gotten two right. Correct? One. one. Edgar got one right. Anybody else in the audience get one right? All right. So panel is winning at this moment. It is seldom that liberty of any kind is lost all at once. This might be the last question. Thomas Jefferson. Murray Rothbard. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I love that we just keep going back to the same well every time. <laughs> One dollar. Huh? Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> all right. Thomas Herbert Hoppe. It's not <laughs> Hoppe. I don't know. David Hume. Emergencies have always been the been the pretext on which the safeguards of individual liberty have been eroded. Zane? Uh, Higgs. I don't know. We're going to find out here in a second. Who else Ayn has Rand. guesses? <laughs> <laughs> it is not Ayn Rand. Alex Jones. He, I mean, he probably said something like it. <laughs> huh? I know it's not Orwell because I only put one Orwell quote in there. All right. Any other guesses? I'm really thrown off by Zane's confidence. you say Higgins? Uh, Oh, Tyek. Tyek. <laughs> Man, that would be wrong. <laughs> the love of liberty is the love of others. The love of power is the love of ourselves. Same. Spooner. It's not Spooner. This is misleading. Um, <laughs> this is probably a norm. <laughs> Enormous. It's probably Hitler, right? <laughs> Murray Rothbard. No, Rothbard wasn't in here. I'm just going to give you that right now. How do you do liberty quotes without Rothbard? It's a misdirect. I knew you were going to guess it every single yeah, daggum time. Sure. <laughs> How about you avoid Randolph? William Hazlitt. Oh, oh. Never guessed that. <laughs> liberty cannot be established without morality, nor morality without faith. Zane. Uh -huh. It could yeah, be. It could be locked. Let me doubt myself. <laughs> what did you guess? Okay. Any guesses? Rothbard. You said there's no Rothbard. It's the Tocqueville. Oh, nice. That's a good call. That's it, y'all. Sorry, sorry. Uh, it wasn't a little more professional. That is. Extremely my fault. I was also, running around getting you, a lot of stuff You went stuff to like done. level five difficulty. We should have been at like level three. Level five Chat difficulty GPT is more fun. Easier. Am I correct in assuming Zane It wasn't won. Chat GPT this time. Yeah. What? Yeah, Zane won. Yeah. Oh, Zane, Zane won. Without yeah. question. Yeah. Without question. Well, I think the panel beat the audience by two points. So it was four to two, I believe. Correct? Yeah. Something, like, something like that. But when you say panel, what you mean to say is Zane? Zane with a side helping of Steve. Yeah. Okay, fair. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, y'all, um, what has been people's like favorite part of coming to the Great Create this weekend? Like, what what are some of y'all's like favorite booths, favorite panels? What have y'all enjoyed? 
I have gone to so many wrestling than I plan to and just spent so much time just hanging out. Yeah, which I don't I don't care for that. We threw this for a reason. So you gotta go to the dad gum events. I went to a couple <laughs> things, but like I was like, ah, I want to see this. I guess, and it's like yeah. I kind of just want to hang out with everyone I don't see ever. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I understand the sentiment there. I, I get that for sure. Um, anybody in the audience, like what, uh, any panels that y'all went to that you found particularly enthralling? I enjoyed the uh, homeschool music thing. Yeah. Who, uh, who did the homeschool one? Well, Do you remember? I remember her name, but she was amazing. Okay. I remember, and she was asked to come back again by one of the audience. <clears throat> nice. And uh, I got her email. All right. <laughs> Yeah, Shepard. Suzanne Shepard. Suzanne Shepard. Okay. Maybe someone should mention the guy who put a couple uh, events on and is sitting in the room. No? Yeah, Sorry, Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we can't pass up the opportunities and shamelessly pander to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say my top two were uh, situational awareness and finance. Oh, yeah. Those were the two. Steve, what'd you, uh, what'd you enjoy? Well, first off, I, I just, I like in general, the venue we picked, because I don't know if you guys know this, but Houston County is branded as the most progressive county in Georgia. <laughs> Did and not know that. Now we're here having a DIY Liberty Fest <laughs> in the most progressive county in Georgia. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> well, that, that's one that always stood out. You didn't know quotes. That's, oh, you know, yeah. 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 <laughs> as as uh, the chair of the Fulton County Libertarian Party, I'd have to say I don't know how it could be anything other than Fulton County, but. Uh, Yes, we can definitely leave it there. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, you guys can thumb more with uh, Houston down here for that title. Nice. Uh, the composting, um, you know, I got like a yeah, the vermiculture so thing. I, yeah, with uh, Seth. I forgot his last name. Uh, Seth Chadwick. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. My wife definitely enjoyed that one. She's obsessed. Mm -hmm. She was pouring our coffee grounds this from this morning into their composting pile. <laughs> <laughs> it's it ridiculous. Mac, do you uh, attend any? Like go to any booths and attend not enough, not as much as I should. Um, uh, really stands out to me, uh, the dude Will out here. Like okay. Brewing the beer. Yeah. My favorite person here. Yeah. Dude, some fantastic beer. Uh, like immaculate stout. Yes. The key to my heart. Yes. So, <laughs> anybody else have any of his beer? Yeah, I tried. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. I helped him brew today. I, 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 for I hadn't been able to get with my buddies this this whole year basically. Yeah. And uh, so my soul needed that. I saw him brewing. Got here this morning right at the right time. He was just starting to mash. I'm like, hey, man, can I help? <laughs> nice, nice. He told me about your setup, which you have never, like, gone into detail about on the podcast. It's awesome. Your oh, setup yeah. is intense. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you want to um, tell people, like, how, how you do it and what you do? Yes. Well, it's – so we, uh, you know, we'll put this in air quotes. We homebrew. So, you know, we have an LLC. <laughs> it's a brewery in planning. But we have uh, three full-barrel stainless conicals. Um so we do, you know, close transfer. So it's, it could, it could launch a nano brewery if we just had a commercial location nice. and, and, you know, all the licensing and stuff like that, which, you know, if you hit all the green lights, it's about $9,000, take you about nine months. How many beers does it take before you qualify as a nano brewery? Cause like you've got your micro breweries and like, and then you're a nano brewery. And then what, if you make like one beer, is that a Pico brewery? Like, like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Pico brewery would be like a homebrew setup. I, I, I guess. I, I don't know if there's really a classification for that, but nano brewing, I think it's a thousand barrels or less a year. And uh, that's uh, a barrel is 31 gallons. So gotcha. Interesting. What, uh, do you have any names that you're going to, that you're mulling over for the brewery? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, of course, you know, we're still working on trademarking and stuff like that, but every, everything we brew is at least 7%. Okay. Cause that's, uh, you know, anything less is just kombucha. Um, <laughs> hey, don't knock kombucha. Come on. <laughs> kombucha is great. Well, it's funny. I started saying that. And then a year ago, Sierra Nevada puts out a nine and a half Imperial kombucha. Oh, wow. Interesting. Oh, okay. Somebody's listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I've, I've, I really enjoyed listening to Derek bros. I, Literally never heard of him um, until this weekend. And man, that dude knows how to explain some of the more complicated sides of like Bitcoin and, and um, living outside of regular institutions in a way that, um, I don't know, is way more digestible than most libertarians talk about. Um, most libertarians get too stuck in the weeds and too like into the details. And he presents it in a very like human and like personable way. Um, so I really, really enjoyed the Derek Bros 
their growth stuff. Um, anybody else in the audience have, have things that they really enjoyed? Mike Tremont. Mike Tremont, yeah, spoke this morning. It was a good speech. Um, what do you think about him running for president? I think I need to get to know Yeah, I would agree. I know next to nothing about him at this point, except from what he did at the speech this morning. So, yeah, it should <coughs> be interesting. Chase. Huh? I enjoyed watching Chase. Chase did good. Yeah, yeah Chase had a good speech. Yeah, for sure. Did you record all of them, or? I recorded as much as I could. Y'all asked me to do way too much this weekend. Well, um, well sorry, you should have cloned yourself or made Zane help you or something. I mean, I, could I have made you help me? Well, Nick did make me go to Walmart to buy hairspray for the 3D printer. So I <laughs> For the 3D printer, right, sure. Sure, sure. It's not for Nick's quaff. Not for that, right? <laughs> uh, At least that's what he told me. Yeah, he picked up something else. But... No, not purple octopus. I told him it was purple aqua, yeah. <laughs> um, but then the Mac, printer wasn't the printer was wasn't working right. It's not my printer, so it was Jared's printer. You didn't to, you didn't print anything good. I was trying to print a gun, but um, oh. Oh. <laughs> I was yes. trying to print a Glock frame, but the uh, okay. As soon as it laid the first layer, the second layer just wouldn't fell apart. That leveled the bed. The bed did level. I I leveled it. <laughs> I only learned that term from you. You taught it to me. <laughs> Zach, you need something? I'm looking for an adapter, of course. Oh, fair enough. Look away, you know? So one thing I didn't see, but I wish that I had, was I see we have Edgar Mons in the audience. Edgar Mills. Ed John Mons. Plus my life. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I might be wrong. <laughs> but the thought behind what I was trying to communicate still stands because Osprey Shooting Solutions and what the man does is extremely beneficial, I think, from my own paranoid vantage point, for our future. Mm. Because I happen to think shit's about to go down. And the more people that understand that and know how to properly navigate that, the better it's going to be. Yeah. That's just my own paranoid conspiracy. I agree. Shit from me to you. Sadly, I didn't get to go to any of your stuff either. Well, you know, they were fabulous. Yeah, yeah I'm, I have no doubt. Electricity uh, in the room. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Why don't uh, Mac, you and Edgar switch spots for a minute? He's going to replace you since you got his name wrong. Um, Edgar, come on up, buddy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cheers, brother. Um, Edgar, tell, tell the folks out there what you do and, and why you're here. Arms training and instruction. That's why you're here and what you do. There's that was very concise. No, uh, yeah, obviously I do firearms training and, and uh, I do other training, other skills training, land navigation. We do some uh, search and rescue mountaineer, outdoor, well, team building, uh, leadership development. Okay. I'm sort of a physical. Yeah. When did you launch uh, that aspect of it outside of the firearm stuff? Uh, in January. Okay. Yeah. Well, the idea was in 2020, but we did our first course in January this year. Fair enough. It takes a long time to <laughs> cook up some ideas sometimes. What made you want to start something like that in addition to the firearms training and everything? Man, look, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Uh, oh, capitalism. I got <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, the right answer. <laughs> look, uh, the Southern Ornith Logical League is the name that all that stuff's under. Mm-hmm. I charge those are high dollar classes. Yeah. And it's to keep my gun stuff low dollar. Okay. So that average humans who go and buy guns but can't prioritize training financially, mm -hmm. they can come out and still afford to shoot because I'm not charging an arm and leg. I nice. saw the rich liberals that want to go into the woods and look at birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, we do. Yeah. <laughs> the cover page is bird watching and it does link to Cornell. Uh, yeah. University Bird Lab. <laughs> so, so if you're an ornithologist, you, you can get some good a answers out of that. But, uh, yeah, those are high dollar. Ex their experiences, you know, the Mountaineer course we just did last month. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was serious business. We did a, uh, and it's scenario based, and we did a rescue. So my son was out on a ledge oh, on wow. Yona Mountain. Oh, jeez. And it rained the whole time, too. And, uh, <laughs> and we, we had a recon team, you know, go spot. And then we moved up the mountain, 
we approached from above. They had to build a three to one system, send the climber down to him, secure him, bandage up his leg, which wasn't actually broken, but notionally broken. Uh, right. That's and then they're not breaking your son's leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had to haul him up, up the mountain uh, with wow. no assistance. So uh, myself and a fellow named, uh, um, well, a company called Higher Ground. Yeah. Um, it, we, we partnered up for that and it was a great time anyway high dollar course but there's a lot of goodness to come out of it because we did sit around the campfire the night prior do a little philosophy a little <laughs> a little libertarian this a little bit of you know why are you here you know yeah. your, your values um it was physically demanding sounds Walking like up you on a mountain was not not nice and then if you have bad ankles and knees walking down you on a mountain is, is not nice uh, anyway, that kind of stuff. I love that the abbreviation is SOL. It's well, friggin' hey, perfect. <laughs> that has two parts, folks. Well, three. Southern Ornithological League. Yeah. Most of the time, it's shit out of luck. Yeah. And then Sons of Liberty was in my... Oh, nice. Yeah. Because uh, on the website, we push a lot of liberty-oriented material. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, one, of the, one of the pages on there, one of, one of the menu items on the Southern Ornithological, Ornithological League page is resources but it's a bunch of articles that a lot of them touch libertarianism freedom mm -hmm. uh, there's some that are like actual mountain rescues you know things that touch all the training that we do but there's a lot of uh ayn rand sprinkling in there and a lot of uh yeah stuff like that so nice. i get to influence sort of subversive not subversively you know soft influence so people that. like action but then they get on there and they're like uh, there's an excellent article on Christianity juxtaposed to objectivism. Because oh. Ayn Rand was a, a mm -hmm. atheist. Uh, I happen to be a Christian, but that doesn't mean we can't uh, find that, that common ground or middle ground of, of how they both make sense to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so stuff like that, man. So that's yes. my that's my libertarian training site right there. Yeah. I love it. Yep. Yeah, we... Uh... Edgar came on the Free Georgia podcast. He was one of the first guests, actually, oh, nice. third or fourth guest. Um, I think it, to date, it's the longest uh, Free Georgia yeah, podcast we've had. While, <laughs> well, you, had, you actually did that one in person. Yeah, I was the only one done in person as well. So it's uh, well, it, it was in person because at the time I live in Rome, but I live outside of city limits. I had six megabits per second <laughs> so, <laughs> internet. I couldn't do a podcast, so I was like, "Where are you live, man?" Like, yeah, it was great. So yeah, if you got the time. There's tons of great information in that in that podcast. Um, where, how can people find uh, your firearms training, and when do you do that? Mm. Uh, it's all that's my that's my job, man. That's my life. So, 24 seven, seven days a week, I answer emails. Nice. Uh, I do a lot of private lessons on the weekdays. Mm -hmm. Most of my courses, no, well, all my courses are on the weekends. I do matches, uh, outlaw matches, um, and all that's at OscarShootingSolutions.com. The Southern Ornithological League courses are are about once every other other month. Okay. So those are big. There's a lot of resources, a lot of uh, planning. Yeah. Uh, those are very involved courses. So that takes a while. How many people attended this last one? Eight. 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 Yeah. Okay. We can, ten is max. Okay. On gotcha. Stuff like that. Yep. Um, because imagine having thirty guys on a mountain. I mean, it's just not practical. Yeah, too many cooks in the kitchen. You gotta have no, yeah. not that. Just oh, just safety. Just, just safety. Keep okay. An eye on everyone. Gotcha. So yeah, we keep it small on stuff like that. Uh, and next course is in June, and it's land navigation, and it's uh, nice. those are twenty plus mile lanes. Wow. And it's an overnighter, so it's day and night land at Land Ave in Talladega National Forest. Wow, that's, uh, that's intense. Come get some of that. Yeah. <laughs> now, nice. Hey, it's a three day. Day one's all classroom. You don't have to have any experience whatsoever. You don't have to bring any, well, personal backpack and stuff, but we provide compass, protractor, map case, pay speeds, the whole works, even radios for radio checks. Wow. Uh, you'll navigate in two-man teams. That way if somebody gets broken, you're not just out there sucking. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, it's a race. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's 20, so roughly 25 miles for each lane. And uh, whoever, whatever team comes in first, they got some nice prizes. I love that. 
seven hundred fifty bucks for that per head. <laughs> That's three days we provide food. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then you can stay in my team room overnight on Friday if you're coming from out of town or whatever. Yeah, otherwise you sleep in the dirt. Right? Well, <laughs> some guy hit me up. He signed up. And said, hey man, uh, I was thinking about bringing a tent. What size tent? Like it's a race. <laughs> what are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> yeah, bring an Enu, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Sign up your website. Southern, yeah. Sorry. Southern Owns Logical League is two teamguys.com. That's the number two. <laughs> I own that domain name long before I come up with Southern Owns Logical League. <laughs> two teamguys.com is where you can find that. But you can access that via uh, Osprey Shoe mm-hmm. Solutions also. Gotcha. Yep. And that's a good one. We got, I think, six folks signed up for that already. Max at 10. All my court, they're all max at 10. Gotcha. So, and that's, that's June 9, 10, 11, I think. All right. And that's going to be a good one. I'm excited about that one. Nice. That sounds and right. That's a real I like competition. That's a skill, man. Uh, yeah. Land navigation is a, a proper uh, survival skill, whatever you want to call it. Oh, man. You have to be able to get from point A to point B mm-hmm. without the GPS. <laughs> so I'm excited to do that one. because, and, and I've got that set up kind of like the Special Forces Q course uh, or selection. Mm. Oh, yeah. Star course, if anybody's ever heard of that. So... That's where the long movement comes from. It looks crazy on the map. Okay, gotcha. It's going to be a good time. I'm very excited. Anyway, we provide breakfast on the way out to the woods. We'll, we'll go get breakfast. You guys will have some mountain house meals that we'll provide during, Love it. during Love the it. walk. Yes. And then after the fact, we'll have a big feast um, on the way home. All right. Yeah. And as far as this weekend goes, what has been your favorite part of the weekend? Well, uh, I sat in the entrepreneur panel. I thought that was good. Um, because I am myself an entrepreneur. Those guys seem to have it all together. <laughs> I don't, they, they were talking about, you have to know money. You have to manage money. Yeah, uh, I'm basic accountant. Com- <laughs> not me. <laughs> I barely graduated high school with pre-algebra. <laughs> um, I'm figuring out it's trial and error for me, but yeah. I'm right. still going. And uh, I've been going since 2017. So I feel like I'm, I've either been failing for six years or I'm doing okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all trial and error as far as business. Goes. But that was what I wanted to hear was the entrepreneur. I like listening to Shane. Yeah. Um, Shane talking about Bitcoin is always yeah, fun. Yeah, I love that because I'm new, not new to Bitcoin, but new to understanding, uh, a deeper understanding. It's unending. Like there's, they were talking about it in like uh, some of the audience was talking about it while they were asking questions, there were two developers in there and they were saying every time they like learn something, they're like, okay, now I have like 30 more things that I know I don't yeah. know. And you feel like an idiot all over again. Then you do learn another thing and you feel like an idiot all over again. And it's yeah. just so, exhausting. <laughs> so those two, those two are my favorite. I like, no, and I like to uh, chase. I sat in his, I like that. Nice. And the only one I really wanted to do was watch your movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I thought the last probably, Three quarters of that. All right. Well, I'll give you a code, and you can uh, you can go okay. watch it for All free right. online later. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that one's still live. If anybody wants fifty percent off, fifty uh, percent off buying uh, divide and dominate, you can type in Steve Hilton is a Fed in your coupon code <laughs> on Vimeo, um, and it'll get you fifty percent off the purchase. Um, who here went to one of Edgar's presentations this weekend? Same, Nick. Oh, beautiful. Okay, well, <laughs> then you don't count. All right. And y'all enjoyed it? He's, oh, yeah. He doesn't suck too bad? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I'm, was, well, I am one of those people that, like, walked around on the sidewalk looking at their phone and hopefully it doesn't get hit by a car. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the situational awareness was definitely uh, uh, going to be helpful. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, one thing you might not know, uh, so back what back in the fall we were, or late summer we were tabling a gun show to support Shane and some of the other candidates mm-hmm. and then we pressured him into buying his first gun. Nice. <laughs> yes, we did. Oh, when did that happen? Uh, what did so you get? It was a Taurus G two C. That's cool. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it was either. I was I was just yeah it's a, a handgun. I was walking around um, all the tables looking at what the prices were. And then texting my dad every time saying, A, is this a good gun? And B, is this a good deal? <laughs> oh, yeah, let's buy that one. I was like, okay, done. 
I don't know what I'm doing. What day was that? It was this Sunday. Because then, like, because then he bought a gun and Jake bought a gun. Yeah. A couple other people bought guns and I felt left out and I bought a gun. I bought a gun on Saturday. Yeah, you bought a. You know what that means, though? Set up the next Libertarian Party shoot at my place. I think it. I think it needs to happen. Heck yeah. Did you do that? Yeah. I've heard that was awesome. Of course, it was awesome. Except it was in July. It was brutal. But it was awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, well, does anybody in the audience have anything that they want us to talk about today? Because I don't know, for the past three or four days, five days, I've not been caught up with the news. I've been focused on preparing for the great create. Um, yeah, there which, was like something about a Trump town hall thing that went this shit. Okay, but, I did. I did um, see some of that. I, was I'm not funny. super. I'm I was scrolling Twitter right now to see what's going on. In the, world. <laughs> well, the, um, the entire Warner Robins narcotics unit is on administrative leave pending an investigation for uh, some kind of impropriety. Who's what's the entire Robins? narcotics unit of Warner so Robins? We can it in the hotel. That's right. That's exactly right. Warner Robins is the next town. Next uh, town uh, over? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And their entire thing got busted. I almost say like administrative leave. Yeah, they're yeah. all under investigation. Party in my hotel room. for some <laughs> undisclosed infraction. Is that where everybody's hotel is? I think so. <laughs> all right. Well, there you go. No, our hotel. Oh, okay. Oh, you're a hotel is? The Wyndham, whatever. Is that where it's I mean, Warner oh. Robins is 10 minutes from here. I mean, we're interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I will say I'm slightly disappointed. When I went home last night, I thought there was going to be libertarians all over the fucking lobby drinking. And there weren't? It was like crickets in the Wow. Y'all are very disappointing. It was probably nine. Oh, we were already stoned. All right. We tried. We tried. Andrew, you got anything for us to talk about? You want us to rant on anything? Do you want to rant on anything? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, Josie the Goat Lady. Yeah. <laughs> Kristen Hammock. The note was really yes. good. Yes, she was awesome. Yeah, she's fun. She's fun. I like her a lot. Yeah, she she came on the Free Georgia podcast. We talked goats and cheese making and all sorts of stuff. She. I don't know she's goat nonsense. She's like a goat is getting too much trouble or they're not producing enough milk. So I'll tell them they're out of here. These are our. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she runs a pretty cool farm. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Like, I don't know, a lot of a lot of cool products you can make with goat's milk, which I mean, she's very amazing. Really cheese. She's yeah, longer. yeah. I didn't even get to have any of that. I didn't even get to visit her she's daggum booth. Longer, she's Goodness gracious. Yeah, I need to not be involved with the LP so I can enjoy things <laughs> like this. Yeah, but then I'll be with the LP in Montana and it'll... But there's literally no one around you. Well, fair enough. I mean, it's a huge state. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, well, my wife is in the audience. <laughs> in case y'all didn't know, she is always right behind the wall during the live stream listening or half listening to everything we're saying. She gets my half of the conversation, which makes me sound like an idiot psychopath. <laughs> and doesn't hear. Every, so every now and then you'll see her walk by to put lip balm on or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, she's been uh, showing off our, our van builds for Vanarchy Tiny Homes, um, which will be around all day tomorrow if anybody wants to check it out that hasn't already. Um, I don't know, Zane, what else, what else did you enjoy this weekend? Yeah, so um, I feel I've been going to a lot of the sessions where it's like the like the agricultural focused ones, and, yeah. and it's like I it, all of this information is really interesting. But I feel like the like I currently live in a in an apartment in like the middle of Sandy Springs, so it's like unless I like you know, get a file folder and put dirt in there and worms in there and start composting like one banana peel at a time. Zane, this, <laughs> like, this feels like your own fault since you could have gone to things that didn't have to do with agriculture. No, so so all the, all the a lot of the political speeches, it's like I've already read all the libertarian treatises that I, uh, that I feel like I... So Zane knows everything, you know, Zane knows everything. Well, it's like... That, 
that no, no, not the hustle. <laughs> the reason why this event is so good is because people don't want to listen to the, the same old libertarian speech all the time. That's people fair. want to learn how to make goat cheese. But well, I also don't think we have, have had the same old libertarian speech. I mean, you know, just the pure libertarian speech. Shane talked Bitcoin. Yep, Shane talked Bitcoin. His take on it. Uh, Reed, so Reed talked about his his position on uh, on LP strategy, which yeah. is kind of something a little bit different. That's a strategy talk, not a philosophy. Yeah, it was, so, it was mean, a good one. You know, I don't think we've had like a normal, like typical LP libertarian speaker. Yeah, I mean we've had two because well, two Chase people. And Mike's Chase and Mike were were the typical. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean they they were both great, but yeah, it was it was like typical libertarian convention stuff. People giving speeches about how they're going to run for something, um, but they're both enjoyable. And you know, I I knew nothing about Mike beforehand, so it was nice to get to know a little bit about him. Um, Steve, you got any other things that you enjoyed this weekend? Uh, well. I was, I was definitely hanging out with Will today. Like I said, making beer with him. That was my soul <laughs> needed that, man. It's Will Bergen, uh, for anybody yeah. who doesn't know. Will the Bergen. Was good too, what was that? What? The dips. <laughs> the halo the dips. dips. <laughs> <laughs> Frick is dip. The guy, one of the vendors. The guy that was selling the, the halo dips <laughs> with the pretzels. And the... Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. But yeah, hang on. Quit with... saying dip over and over again. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. That yeah, how do you not know? I mean, the dip. I haven't been out there. It's not my fault. <laughs> Gosh. Um, yeah, uh, one of the things, I, I didn't know anything about Monero until Derek Bro started talking about it. And it was very interesting to, to hear because all I am into is Bitcoin. And I thought you were also in that hex. Shut your mouth, Nick. Um, I, I mean, I still have some, but we're not going to talk about hex right now. Um, Monero was interesting. I mean, the, the great thing about Bitcoin is it's auditable. The, the annoying thing about Monero is it's not. It, but the great thing about Monero is that it's completely private. Um, so there's no, there's no like tracing transactions or anything like that, which um, makes it super interesting. Yeah, and also they didn't do a pre-mine and all the other stuff that you see, you know. So I consider them a legitimate project at least versus. Interesting. Uh, versus, like it better than Zcash? Uh, Zcash do the same thing? Uh, was it Zcat? No, it was uh... Zcash doesn't have quite the anonymity that Monero does. Oh well, yeah, Z Z plus, it, plus like, it's called Zcash. <laughs> plus it's called Zcash. <laughs> the privacy optional, I believe, on that, which I think allowed them to be more on uh, on more exchanges, but also you know if it's privacy optional, then you're not you're probably not that private. So there's. There's plus and minus. And I think things are shaking out more and more. I think Monero is rising to the top of the, you know, anonymous coins. And uh, the friends I have in law enforcement say that if Monero is used in particular crimes, it makes it much more difficult to solve the case because there's not a trail. I like follow. that. Like eventually, you know, you've got to get into their email somehow or trick them into telling you something. But you know, there's no so money. Steve trail. says, um, <laughs> if you're going to commit a crime, use Monero. Um, there you go. Steve Hilton is not a Fed. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if, if you want kids in a cabinet from Wayfair.com, buy it with Monero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, man. Um, in my <laughs> Is there anybody else who wants to come join the stream? Um, has anything to promote, anything to talk about? Because, uh, you know, this whole weekend is about promoting small businesses and um, learning new skills and all that kind of thing. So if you have something that you want to talk about, you are welcome to replace Edgar. I think he's had his time in the sun. Um, Bring it up. <laughs> yeah, come on. You're talking about farming in your farm and not being able to. Yeah, over towards him. They'll go through until you broke it, so you can grow your own fresh mushrooms. Yeah, I was at the mushroom talk. Um, but the, the other critical factor, uh, in addition to not having the space, is not really having the desire to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He just is making up excuses at this point. Goodness gracious. So I, I have made this point to many people, 
and they always seem to understand that in the same in the same way that a lot of libertarians get a lot of satisfaction out of being very self-sufficient and doing a lot of things for themselves which i totally understand why that's really good to do and why that's probably one of the better options that we have for how to fight the state and if you like to do that then that's awesome the problem is that the same satisfaction that people get from doing that I get from contemplating the global division of labor. <laughs> <laughs> it takes all kinds. Yeah. yeah, I'm so glad there's different kinds of people in the world. <laughs> I grow mushrooms. Yeah, fair I'm enough. Happy to grow mushrooms. Nice. You can say you grow more mushrooms. You wouldn't think like that. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. What kind of mushrooms they were. So we, uh, we went to the farmer's market in town this morning on the way in here, and uh, there was a guy, I think it was Georgia Fresh, something like that. So it was a really cool concept because – he has a, a hydroponic setup in a, in a Connex, so like one of the you know storage containers for eighteen wheelers, mm -hmm. and he had it cut up into three compartments. And in, in the first one, he had mushrooms. Second one, he had microgreens, and the third one, he had you know various lettuces. And he sold us the lettuce, and he was like, "Yeah, and, and you see that right there, that little root ball?" He's like, "You put that in a cup of water, and it's going to think it's in my hydroponic system. And it's going to continue to leaf out." And we're like, "So we can propagate this?" And he's like, "I'm not telling you that, but..." If you put it in a cup of water, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, the mushrooms. We got the blue oyster mushrooms from him. And he sells the setups, too. It, it's like a bag of sawdust, what it looks like, basically. Yeah. And uh, still had a hearty chunk of it at the bottom. And he's like, that. Eh, cut that off. Put that in a cup of water. I'm not saying you propagate it, but you might get some mushrooms grow out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go down to the end of the table. Introduce yourself. Let people know who you are and why you're here. Uh, yep. uh, my name is Jason Denzer. Um, I'm here to be around cool people, you know. I and, love uh, it. You know, in the wrong place. I'm a 3D printer. I do 3D printing. Oh, that's my business. Is. Nice. I uh, own 3D printing tech along with my business partner. And uh, we're in Clarkston. And uh, we do print service work and okay. uh, sell printers. What uh, so you you service the printers or you print actually print things for people? To... Mostly print services. We sell do the printing service. So gotcha. People say print print one of these, print a thousand of these for us, and then we print them. What's something you get? Do you get like specific items regularly, or like what do you print the most? Or is it all random it's stuff? Random stuff. Whatever bubbles out of the internet. You know, people go to our website. We do sales models of large equipment that they can't transport so then we build a model print it finish it paint it and make a model of that large piece wow. of equipment I, we did a mobile transformer unit uh for a electrical company uh we've done props for movies uh wow. we did part of the enclosure for uh black adam that he was in oh, wow. like the, the bars that go around yeah he was kept in we did that um Face masks for Jungle Cruise, the faces of the pirates that kind of were at the, yeah, the guys at the end. Uh, Dang. Scan the dash of the Veloster and Ant Man and Wasp. So wow. Design the big handle to go on there to change the size of it. So do fun stuff like that and just regular products too that people produce, like a, a scraper for, or a sharpener for a scraper for putting wax on snowboards and stuff. Interesting. Like a little bit of everything. When did you start uh, start that business? 2015, but I've been doing printing since 2013. Wow. When did, I don't even know, when did 3D printers like start becoming popular or like? Uh, that was the, I guess it was the rep rap movement when they started making a lot of laser cut wood. Okay. And uh, that's when it kind of first started. I remember looking at them like, yeah, that thing looks a little questionable and the output was questionable. But I think MakerBot would have been probably, would have been 2012, 2012, 2013. Uh, when I was in school, they they gave us uh, they put MakerBots for general use. Like they had some expensive 3D printers for running other stuff, mm -hmm. but that year, I think it was going into my senior year, they were like, "Here's two MakerBots you guys can use." The, <laughs> the original MakerBots were great, and then they decided to get creative and make terrible fifth gens. <laughs> yeah, I think at that point, those were running at like a thousand bucks or so. I think yeah. and everyone was like, look how cheap 3D printing is. And now yeah. get an ender for 200 bucks. Exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I just got a bamboo, which is the high speed one that they came up with. I love that thing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. How long? So what's like the biggest thing you can print? We have a one meter by one meter by 0.7 meters tall. 
printer. That's a big Jeez, printer. That's huge. We printed a 12 foot Coke bottle. That was the biggest thing we printed. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> how, long, how long did that take? I don't know. It was 200 hours or something. Goodness like that. gracious. It was just a shell of thing. And then yeah. the fiberglass guys put it together, <clears throat> coated it, and made a mold from it, and then made fiberglass Coke bottles, which were then wrapped to look like Coke bottles. <laughs> giant they put them in game day features wow that is cool, so that was cool. what do you have like a favorite thing you've printed or um, anything like that <clears throat> that's my favorite big thing okay uh i think i'm most proud of that mobile transformer unit I bet. they gave me the cad for the actual truck <laughs> like for nuts bolts everything and i had to <laughs> spend months cleaning that thing up and making it printable and thickening everything Jeez. when you scale sheet metal down it becomes nothing Right. And, you know, into a model size, you have to stretch everything out, make everything kind of exaggerated, and, and painted the thing, put copper wires on it where the wires were. So it was wow. What's the name of your business? 3D Printing Tech. 3D Printing Tech. Yeah. What program do you use for that? <clears throat> Space Plane is my go to. It works well with solid models and meshes. I mean, people give me terrible files if I use the system. <laughs> <laughs> what would be something you'd Tell somebody who has no idea how to start 3D printing how to get into it. YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Buy a cheap printer and learn as you learn what you need as you go. What's a good cheap <clears throat> What's a good cheap printer for people to buy? Um, any of the Creality's, like the Ender 3s, that type of thing. Um, okay. If you want to spend a little extra money, the seven hundred dollar range is. I like the bamboos. And the ones. Bamboos. Those are high speed. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Nice. Um, but yeah, you just I taught myself on a 3D model, and I just learned as I went based on what I needed to get the project done. It's all out there. You just mm -hmm. gotta take it, take advantage of it. Gotcha. Wow, that is so interesting. That's I've been wanting to get into 3D printing, but haven't uh, had the mind like this availability for so to learn it. <laughs> to hold something that you created in yeah. your mind, you know, and get it out of your head into a physical object. I bet. You, if I printed stuff for my kids and I just printed a rocket enclosure for a water rocket for my kids' science Olympiad. Nice. Got uh, third place in the state. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, so. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, it is 8.02. Comedy starts in 30 minutes, and I have to go help set up for that. So, so we're going to keep this going. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> it. We've got more guests coming. So. Yeah, this is the podcast anarchy. Do we have more guests coming? Zach says there's guests. He said Reed and maybe uh, Nutter and some other people might be hopping in. Well, Nutter has to be on stage mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, well, we're doing our thing, so. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, you got voted off the island. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. Y'all can vote me off. <laughs> Um, yeah, if y'all want to keep chatting, feel free. The camera's still rolling. We're still recording. Y'all keep going, but I got to go set up for, uh, for, for the comedy show. So, yeah, this, <laughs> this is my exit, but seriously, feel free, right. to, feel free to keep chatting. Yeah, tell Zach to send more people in. I will. I will. All right, who's coming up here next? Uh... Just remember, Dennis, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Jake's gone. Time for the real fun. All right. Uh, I don't know what we do without Jake. Um, Jake's the one that comes up with every single Well, I could say, uh, you know. That's one of the beers you didn't want to give me. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Now, now, you're supposed to be limited. You only got the one free. I was just going to, if we want to, you know, go down a tangent rabbit hole here. And, and, you know, something Mac alluded to was that, you know, he feels like something's about to go down. And, I, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot, too. I pray to God every day that it doesn't. And, you know, I'm going to do my part to make sure that – at least, you know, my neighborhood, my town is, you know, more cohesive with me in it. Um, you know, the, the whole, you know, I'm just going to withdraw. I want everybody to leave me alone. I, you know, kudos to you. If you can do that, you can make that work. Uh, but I just feel like, you know, at the end of the day, when they take over, all you're doing is just buying yourself time until they send the drones out with the nerve gas. Um, but with the, you know, like the Bud Light can, you know, all the outrage, all the culture war stuff, what they're doing is they're, they're trying to, use your emotional state to manufacture a sense of crisis and simultaneously shifting how you perceive value. You know, it's, it's what you put value in. It's what you focus on. If they're going to try to support the dollar with some kind of world economic system, they have to change 
how you value things. Uh, so, you know, current, what you think is, is luxury, uh, you know, that might totally go away. They, it might not even be a thing. Uh, and, you know, Bud Light, you know, for all the controversy, uh, the prices have gone up. Actually. And they're, they're still selling. You know, sales are down. Stock is down, but they're still selling. And it's in the meantime, we're focusing on these inane topics, fighting over culture war stuff that is totally irrelevant to the bigger picture of our economic system is being supplanted. You mean like, how, like uh, what, four major banks, have, well, four large regional banks have failed it, and the banks that have failed are now what, larger market caps than the banks that failed in 2008. Just two of them. Right. Silicon Valley Bank and what was it, First Republic. First Republic. Those two combined are worse than 08. Everything's fine, y'all. Relax, you know. Meanwhile, it's, it's controlled demolition. And, and Jerome Powell even says this kind of stuff. Uh, he doesn't use the words controlled demolition. I mean, they, uh, but Republic he does say. Bank was it the day First Republic collapsed? Or what was it, PacWest also they were um, talking about? But the same day, one of those going on, they hiked <laughs> again. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, they're there hiking rates while the banks are failing because of these, you know, because of the situation they've been put in because of the rate hikes yeah and, you know, and then, now that's it's their fault for the way that they allocated assets but you know it's all a house of cards to begin with right and then you know so, meanwhile we're we're arguing over a beer can and countries are dropping the u.s dollar i mean there is a there actually is a little bit of overlap between that and like i mean the reason why bud light you know put Dylan Mulvaney on their can is not because they thought that that was going to appeal to their demographic. It's because it was going to appeal to BlackRock and the other big money managers. It was to sell their stock. It wasn't really to sell their beer. So the fact that a lot of people are getting up in arms about, you know, oh, I can't believe Bud Light is like pandering to trans people. That's not really the point. The point is, uh, about getting angry is opposing the, the imposition of the environment uh, environmental, social, and governance standards that are being, you know, imposed by the WEF and, you know, the Fed and BlackRock and other money managers. I mean, oh, absolutely. Sort of the top people. But, like, the lady, the lady who put out that ad is on, like, some podcast, I believe you're modern, but, like, she's not like a true believer. Today. Yeah, but it's, it's also, like, like, yeah, it's probably true. It's, well, and, and I, I, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm thinking deeply. I, I ignored that story so hard. Like, I was aware it happened, but I'm like, I just don't care. <laughs> well, and I'm not I saying I'm not Bud saying Light. that I the Bud Light thing in particular was a coordinated effort, and they were in on it. Yeah, you know, that's not what I'm saying. It's right. just that you're going to see more and more of that come out. There's going to be things because you know, especially as inflation rises, we you know, purchasing slows down. People tend to stay home more. All this kind of stuff. So what, what happens when you stay home more? Uh, you're going to watch more TV. Uh, so that's you know, stay tuned for your regularly scheduled scheduled programming uh, because they're about to start rolling some things out and. Some of the media corporations are in on it willfully, uh, and others just don't know. They're true believers, uh, but they're going to, you know, they're going to pass this narrative along, and it's just going to be one of those things that, that yeah. And in order to get someone to change their habits, you have to make them uncomfortable. You know, to get somebody to defy their nature, to change their behavior in a certain way, you have to unseat their comfort somehow. You have to disrupt their schedule. Something has to change that they don't like. And then that is how they go to the new thing. And so, you know, are we going to default on the debt? I don't know. But, you know, if we do, it's going to happen, what, in June? Uh, Oddly enough. The latest at this point. Yeah. yeah. Oddly enough, you know, the the month before they're trying to roll out the CBDC. Uh, so it's, I would just be on the lookout for those kind of things. Um, you know, maybe it's just a curse of mine that I can pick up on some of these patterns. Uh, but, you know, you're going to see some things that are kind of off the wall of, like, you know, I'm programmed to be upset about this, but just, you know, take a pause, step back and think and just realize that, you know, there are people in charge on a global scale because you got, you know, Klaus Schwab over there at the WEF. I mean, these guys are openly, you can go to their website and look at their papers. They're not hiding this stuff. They're putting it in your face. And that's, you know, if you, if you want to get into the whole good versus evil battle, you know, lesser magic kind of thing, that's how they evade karma is they tell you up front, you know, I'm coming for your children I mean, if and, and if you do nothing and it happens, well, they have no repercussion. They have the hubris to think it's a good idea. Well, also, they think it turns if, if there's a white pill to this, though, it's, or at least in our echo chamber, maybe, um, you know, Elon Musk announced this new CEO of Twitter who's 
you know, World Economic Forum <laughs> associated and everything else. And that's the immediate call out by everyone on Twitter. Like, oh, it's, it's done. <laughs> look what he did. He brought in the World Economic Forum's douche. Like, well, I would look, I would look to him to be the savior anyways. Well, he even no, said this but, on Rogan. Right. No, He's like, I'm just, I, you know, I'm just a normal dude. And, and, you know, Elon's not our savior for liberty. You know, every no, time he does no something good, get, you know, give him kudos where it's due. But I wouldn't rely on him to no, but, advance the cause, so to say. No, but I mean. It's odd that the World Economic Forum lady gets hired for that, you know? Uh, it, it feels like it's right back to, oh, we're going right back to what it was, you know? So you spent all that money to just do what you did? I don't know Yeah, what's going on there, how she got in. But the fact that, you know, a whole bunch of Twitter got up in arms over that and was like, oh, look what, look, look what they did now. Oh, it, it's over here. So maybe we all just move over to Noster and, you know. I, I'm, I'm willing to give him credit, though. I mean... I think when you look at things that Elon Musk does, he does a lot of things instinctually that he doesn't really fully understand the meaning behind them, but he's moving forward in a, in a reasonable direction. So I would say give him a little bit of the doubt. And by the way, I would like to say the Signature Bank Commission collapsed yesterday. So we're now three major banks. Signature? All right. Signature? Yep. Already collapsed? Yeah, I thought they went under, or, or they were like they the filed for bankruptcy they like the same filed, week. But it, it formally happened literally yesterday. Oh. Okay. So, so yeah, you know the banks are collapsing. Elon meets the uh, autism criteria. He has yes. he's diagnosed. Oh yeah. Could get it, which was fun when they started going through and saying, "Well, Elon Musk has special needs and is not a fool yet." Technically. There we go. And he's African American. <laughs> I like to I like to bet that he put out that you know if anybody could prove that his family came from an emerald mine, he'd give him I forget what the what the prize was, but then his his dad came out and was like, uh, yeah, he got started with money from my emerald mine. You know, it was it wasn't a mine in the in the traditional sense where you you know all the heavy equipment and this and that and the other. It was more like leasing the mineral rights, uh, but they did make money off of an emerald deposit and that's how he got started that's how he got over here anybody wants to talk about zoning laws uh, my aunt got a visit yesterday from the cedar town uh, zoning officer asking if she was aware that i've been abusing my mother interesting yeah how is that a zoning officer well, a certain uh, place to do that. <laughs> how's that a... it makes about as much sense as uh, my wheelchair right now being a public nuisance Things like that. So. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, it's zoned for commercial, not uh, elder abuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's thoroughly ridiculous. Well, so the, the zoning codes is one thing in particular that stands out to me because you know the the Agenda Twenty One stuff. You know, you look at these UN treaties, and that's where a lot of these zoning laws, these building codes, get passed down from. I mean, I, I, I just came out of school for this a couple of years ago. And that was one of the things they were talking about was, you know, the international building code. And then, you know, all these local municipalities mimic that. That's always like the, the, the callback of their basis for how this code is sound, how it makes sense. And they're, they're oh, well, you know, according to the IBC, you know, international building code, this, that, and the other. And it's like, well, why do we have to do it like the rest of the world? We're, I mean, they're on meters. We're on feet, for God's sakes. Uh, well, you can't. Only one of those units put a man on the bed. <laughs> That's right. But you can't build within 50 feet of um, which in a, in a town like Cedar Town means you can no, can no longer build on any lots. Well, and that's so for certain zoning. So you you must be AR zone if that's a fifty foot. That's a rear setback, probably, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's and we've got. Uh, I don't know. The problem is we got zoning zoning ordinances that are coming into effect right now. All the municipalities just got together. So the, it, there's like a Greater Atlanta Regional Commission or something like that. And uh, they all just have their annual powwows. Usually they go to, oddly enough, Jekyll Island. Um, no. Uh, yeah, exactly. Where they also train to use the Dominion voting machines. Um, but uh, there was a lot of a lot of municipalities just got together. And they, they had moratoriums on development. Uh, so like Fayette County, Pike County, for instance. I know, you know, 90-day moratorium on development. Okay, well, we have a 90-day moratorium on taxes. Uh, because you're literally not doing your job we pay you for during this 90 days. Now, I get it. If you're trying to rewrite the code, there needs to be some kind of a pause. But, hey, quid pro quo, homie. Give me a tax break. You know? And, and I'll, I'll say this as well. Like, for example, 
we're an agricultural community. You cannot own two chickens. But under, under the farm bill, under the farm bill, and somebody just has to go to the zoning office and stand up and say this, the, the farm bill, that, that is a national law that they cannot make something banning that. Uh, they, they can't ban you from. You, you can't, in the state of Georgia, the firearms industry is a protected industry too. And Secret Town said to us a few years ago when we tried to open a gun store, you can sue us. Yeah. And that's the thing. They'll come through and like, I, I'm on, I was on four months probation had to pay you know, a $200 fee for a municipal violation, which I'm not certain is even legal. It's going to wind up costing $4,200 to go through and defend things on the other side. And so they, they set the they, they set the bar so they just they don't want you to go through and invite things. And if they even put it on their paperwork that they don't want to issue citations, they want compliance. Yep. And I read that and I was just like, how how does how do people not see this? Well, and that's also publicly admitting they don't have code enforcement. Okay. You know, that 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 statement to me just says we can't enforce this, so please just do it. <laughs> but it also means that they don't defend it. Now, yes. this court is, is a kangaroo court anymore. Okay? The fact that I beat one of the three charges they put against me in a kangaroo court just shows you the status of what's going on. Oh, yeah. But, again, how, how, do, you go, how do you go back and fight? You file a superior court. I contact the superior court. This court of the, the uh, superior court of Polk County, the county clerk did not know how to file a field paper. And so I literally go through and I quote to them what Georgia, I think it's uh, 5320, where it goes through and says, you know, the superior, the court of the superior court is the one that's actually supposed to go through and, and accept the appeal. And they're like, no, no, we're going to send it to the DA. And I'm like, the DA's adversarial in this case. So that's what we're <laughs> going to do. Well, are you trying to tell me how to do your Well, if necessary, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, obviously that's, I'm, you don't know how to do your job because I'm calling you up and saying I'm going to file a field paperwork. And I'm not asking you what to put in it or anything else. That's a lawyer's job or my, my filing pro se. And that's fine. I'm just saying, are you going to be there to accept it? And how much money do I need to bring to go through and file this? Because they've already got my $200 in, in fees and in fines that are there. I got to file another $450. It, it's just the whole situation is thoroughly ridiculous. Absolutely. Yeah. It's enough people are not standing up to say something about that. And it's, you know, these meetings are largely unattended, period. Yeah. Uh, not just underattended, like it's it's literally just the council and empty chairs. And, you know, they still go through the proceedings and they can just ramrod through whatever they want. And, you know, what's kind of concerning to me, I kind of looked through some of the, the codes that have been revised. Uh, so Fayette County just revised their code. I know Pike did, uh, Spalding did last year, uh, but it's a lot of them are kind of unifying yeah, it's, 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 you know, which, you know, for what I do for a living makes it easier. Uh, but it's also kind of scary because it's like, wait a second, you guys are all kind of conspiring together to have these you know, same rules and regulations blanketed across Metro it's Atlanta. In, it's interesting because you're, you know, you being in the industry you're in, catch on that, you know, you have to know this. You see this happening. None of us know. And this is kind of like the simple thing that we could be pushing as an organization here. Like, hey, go go to your county and like. Tell them to knock this shit off. You well, know? yeah, like, well, and, and like, particularly, we have, we you know, zoning and I, education. Yeah. So those are the two meetings that everybody needs to be. In. If you got a county, if you have an affiliate in a county, send somebody to at least sit there and listen to to what they're spewing. Well, that we've we found at least in Fayette County, going to the education meetings, that uh, that's a moot point. Uh, they the, the, their policy is codified before they have the meeting. And then they only They've already made the decision. They're just there to formally introduce you to it. And they only let you speak on a timer. So. Yeah, and they and they, they make and you speak on a timer. Time. And uh, one of the buttholes will sit up there and live tweet and mock you while you're talking. Mm -hmm. Steve, school board, everyone. <laughs> there is a mask mandate, and uh, and we didn't want our kindergartner to have to. Have them. We didn't want to, we, like we were fighting for the kids who wore one, but we didn't want him to have to do it. And we all had to stand line. But yeah, the zoning stuff. So you know on. Uh, on a basic level, I understand the need for it. You know, in the wake of the Chicago fire, we realized, hey, buildings need to be at least 10 feet apart. That's common sense stuff. You know, so you look at uh, neighboring states around us, like Tennessee, for instance, where you have a third of their counties opted out of the International Building Code. They do not have zoning departments. 
if you want to build a house in one of these Tennessee counties, it goes through the fire marshal. And he goes out there with common sense and says, yeah, it looks good to me. Build it. One very, you know? One very tiny way you can fight back on some of the zoning stuff is that the Atlanta Regional Commission, so kind of the urban planning board for the Atlanta area currently has a public survey out. And if you're willing to sit through some multiple choice questions that it, nobody in the public nor any urban planner themselves could possibly know the answer to, you can uh, get to some free response questions. Me and Brian Allen from Fulton have both filled out the survey telling the ARC that they should dissolve themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and all of you should do that as well. But I think, but I think what you're bringing up here, Steve, is at least an interesting thing that to look at as a uh, issue to push and like uh, you know elizabeth's put together the uh the smart city thing. this goes hand in hand with and it. I, I think this is a, a thing that you know we can come up with a uh similar thing get a domain and like push this as an educational uh, uh coalition that we can build as well you know so I, I think there's there's room on that and it's a local thing and something that people can do and I, you know so make a difference I, I think there's room there on that that's interesting like i said i don't know anything about zoning and where it comes from but right yeah. well and that's you know the the types that tend to uh you know just want to isolate i just want a homestead be left alone well this is this is you know picture perfect proof here they will not leave you alone they will come find you and they will continue to try to tell you what to do and mess with your life and so like i said some of the some of the zoning stuff makes sense it's it's rooted in common sense uh, but a lot of it goes way too far. Uh -oh, this is... and now you, you, what's the, oh, the, the other thing they found was oh, no, I bet years, you. You, know, you have to build at least like 1,600 square feet or something like that. Yeah. But again, you can't build it within 50 feet. Oh, and then, and then there's, there's some municipalities that, uh, you know, if you want to build a tool shed in your backyard, it can't be a certain ratio. It can't be over 50% of your heated floor space of your main house. You know, so you're a guy with a diesel mechanic on three acres in Stockbridge, and uh, you know you want to. You've got a 1,500 square foot house. You want to build a, a 20 by 40 shop, so you run a shop out of your. Nope, too much. That's 52 percent. Yeah, and all the progressives have their hair on fire about. Oh, why is there no affordable housing? Well, maybe it's because the zoning laws have minimum lot sizes and minimum square footage requirements yeah, that okay. make it impossible to even build small houses. You can only you're only allowed to build huge houses, and then they wonder why poor people can't afford houses. Well, and as it pertains to the affordable housing stuff, so what some of the stuff we're seeing too, and I, I've seen some magazines. Um, so we, we were signed up for our 401k at work, and I was in in the uh, Edward Jones place. You know, signed up, one of the magazines they were talking about. There was some developers in Savannah recently. So, um, you know, Chatham County you know, has been, the, it's been their holy grail for like 20 years to have affordable housing. But then you have to do all these environmental impact studies and, uh, you know, God forbid you find a gopher tortoise or something on the property. <laughs> you know, then it has to be relocated, but it has to be you know, encouraged to naturally migrate off the property. You can't just physically move it. You know, all this kind of stuff. And this, this, this is all in the wake of. And then it lands somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Here anyway. But, in, you know, in 1996, Georgia passed their version of the Clean Water Act. You know, that was this was some of the stuff that Jimmy Carter foisted upon us. Thank you for homebrewing. Uh, but this Clean Water Act stuff. Yeah. Who don't want clean water? Right. How do you oppose this? How do you run a campaign saying I want to dismantle the Clean Water Act? Uh, but so in 1996, Georgia passed its version of that and a whole slew of things that we're just now finding out. Municipalities are just now getting geared up and start enforcing this stuff. The state just started dropping the hammer on some of these folks saying, hey, you're not even enforcing any of this are you even investigating this you know like for instance if it's a, a perennial stream so if it's a creek that has a name right you can't do anything within 200 feet of the bank of the creek and then say you know a big rain event happens and it just happened to be in one of the oxbows of the creek and the creek moves so does that buffer you know the old buffer doesn't move it stays the same no I no no spill it on riparian the buffers follow the, the bank really yes sir you want to hear a corrupt chatham county story yeah, absolutely. So we just had the. Uh, oh, sorry. I don't know what I'm doing here. You have to lean in it. You can just talk right here. Um, we just. Uh, we. I'm from near Savannah. There's a new um, arena put in. And of course, it's been a long time coming. Like, uh, what, 25 years? They probably talk about it. And wouldn't you know, the land that they wanted for that, with all these old houses that no one lived in, or did they live in? Wouldn't you know who owned all those houses? 
the city council. Isn't that so bizarre? That's very bizarre. That's all I had to add. I, I feel like, I mean, what do you want me to talk about? Um, we've, it's the it's libations you've been on before, right? Well, you're in the chat for right? for a half there's second. A, there's a judge in Fayetteville that uh, his wife used to own the drug testing facility, so he, you know he would put people on probation, and then you had to go to her place to go get tested. You gotta love how that happens, right? <laughs> wow. What did I miss? Oh, we've been going for a while. We uh, we did some trivia. Uh, Jake did quotes, and it was terrible because he picked hard ones that no one knew. Uh, so we're done. Why am I here? Oh, Are we, we done? We're wrapping up. Oh, oh, okay. I guess we're wrapping up now. <laughs> yeah, what did you enjoy the most, buddy? Feeding people. Feeding people. Yeah. And you did it well. I really appreciate that. Oh, that yeah. sandwich was clutch yesterday. Oh, well, good. After you cleaned up, my dog went and licked the ground. Good. Uh, what What else did I like about... Um, did you get any, any talks or anything you liked? I think... Well, of course. Uh, I think... I think that for the first year that this happened, this is like right up our alley. There's something for everyone. If you like this, you'll probably like that. If you don't, you'll at least like, I mean, that's not my thing, but you're doing it. Yay. <laughs> um, you know, and so we're getting a five minute warning. Was, sorry guys. Zach's giving me the line. I gotta go. Uh, so I think just the overall like tailgate, vibe because i think there's a an undercurrent that everyone realized like no one's coming to help you it does not get better than this if you want it to get better than this surround yourself with a community that you like and make it happen no one's gonna so it's just great <laughs> <laughs> that's all i have to say i love you guys this is great all right and the other reason you have to keep I just opened it. Right. Oh, you want me to like, it's not alcoholic. That is, that is a real winner loser thing to do to chug a non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> hey, it's, it's 0.3%. You might get a head brush. Yeah. But I'm this way sober. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, a, I'm good. All right. Yeah. We're going to wrap up here tonight. Uh, so, special, so thanks to Steve and Zane and uh, Jake, wherever he is. And, uh, you know, our special guests, uh, everyone who showed up here, and then, of course, uh, Buddy. So, yeah, Buddy, for, you know, sandwiches. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, so this has been a, uh, a great event, I think. And tomorrow we do some business, uh, vote for some people, do some things, and, uh, you know, see what happens until January. You know, that's kind of how this works, I think. I think we're going to be again in January, election yeah. year. How do, we, how do we end it? Hands um, in. Quack. 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 I mean, Quack. 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 What do I press to end it? Uh, well, luckily, we're not actually live right now. so like I know, but I can stop the recording. Yeah. No, no. I'll tell four usually works. the only thing that's recording. Oh. Well, the audio is recording here, but that's recording. <laughs> Whoops, Daisy. I can just turn it off. Whoops. I don't know. Uh, Nikki probably knows how to work it, so... I don't. So, that's so we can watch. Watch this. We can end the recording now and just walk away. There we All go. Right. Cheers, everybody. Yeah.